This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Hurting people hurt people. When you learn that, it's, it helps you to be able to get over the things that people do to you. There's so much stress in the world, and people today are just about to explode. It takes a lot of strength to be able to forgive somebody, let it go, and trust God to do what only God can do. I said last night, after somebody hurts you, don't let them keep hurting you the rest of your life by continually hanging on to what they did to you and hating them. I love this. The author of this quote is unknown. Forgive not because your enemies deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. Isn't that good? There's people in here today that you're hurting and you've been hurting for a long, long time. Some of you perhaps most of your life because of something that happened to you in your childhood. And it's because you have refused to lay it down. Today is the day to lay it down. Amen? Everybody in life is going to get hurt. I don't care who you are, what your background is. You have already been hurt. You probably will get hurt again. But the good news is, is the great healer lives on the inside of us as believers in Jesus Christ. You know, I've been hurt a lot in my childhood, abused by my dad and a couple of uncles and my grandfather and married the first guy that came along when I was 18. I got married and that was like the dumbest thing I could have ever done because he was in worse shape than I was. And you know, a lot of times wounded people marry other wounded people and then they just keep wounding each other. And I did it out of desperation. I thought nobody would ever want me. So I just grabbed the first guy that came along. How many of you know that that's a tendency when you're afraid of loneliness, you'll take something, even if you know down deep in your heart, it's not going to be the right thing. Amen. Yeah. Preach. Amen. And, uh, but then you find out once you got it, you got it. And so we were married five years, but it was more like a joke than anything else because he constantly would run around with other women, didn't work and, and, uh, just was a con man and a petty thief and wrote bad checks. And, you know, it, I mean, it was just a mess and he'd leave me all the time. He abandoned me in Albuquerque. He abandoned me in Oakland, California, and I'd have to borrow money and come home on a bus. Why, why is it that women that have been hurt will marry somebody like that and then just keep going back to them and keep going back to them? Come on. Is anybody hearing me? And keep going back to them. You deserve better than that. And so did I. But you got to stand up for yourself. Amen. We usually get what we put up with in life. I had, I mean, a boatload of problems. So when I stand here and tell you that the word of God works. And it will change you. And it will heal you. I'm not telling you because I read it in a book. I've experienced God's healing power in my life. But I am going to tell you that it will take more than you just praying to be healed. We pray. And I think we're, we have a misconception about prayer. We think when we pray, then God fixes everything. But you know what I'm finding out more and more even in the last two or three years? When we pray, very often God shows us what we need to do. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't move supernaturally. Anything we cannot do, he will do for us. If we're going to do nothing and expect God to do everything, then that's not going to happen. And if you've been badly hurt by someone, you can get completely well and be whole, but I am not going to tell you some fabricated, made up story. It will not be easy. It will take time. It will take you doing some things that you'd rather not do, things that you don't feel are fair, like forgiving people, 
and maybe even being required by God to bless those people. See, here's the thing. Because somebody treated you wrong, that doesn't give you a license now to treat them wrong. I don't know what, what makes us think that. God never tells us to give other people what they gave us. He always says, treat them the way you would like to be treated. And sometimes you're going to have to treat somebody else right a long time before they begin to treat you right. And there's a possibility they might not ever change. But here's the thing. The amount of years that we have here on this earth are so limited. I don't think that you realize in your 20s and 30s how fast you're going to be 60 and 70 and 80. <laughs> Amen? You know, my life is, I've lived almost all of it. And so I'll tell you what, I'm going to double up and I'm going to get, make the devil extra mad in these last years that I've got. Because, I mean, what God has done in my life is absolutely amazing. And I can tell you, it is actually totally impossible if it was anything other than God there is no way that what God has done in my life could have happened. And he can and is and wants to do the exact same thing in every one of your lives. But the first thing you've got to give up is all bitterness, all resentment, all hatred, all offense. You have to let go of that stuff. Because even as we read earlier before I started actually the sermon in Mark 11... It says that whatever we ask in Jesus' name, believing that we have received it, we will get it. However, when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, you have to leave it, drop it, let it go, or your heavenly Father cannot forgive you. Can somebody please hear that enough to actually believe it today? Do we realize what that's saying? That any prayer that I pray, if I'm praying it with unforgiveness in my heart, God cannot and is not going to answer that prayer. Sometimes we're praying for God to change somebody and we're in the middle of hating them while we're asking God to change them. <laughs> you know, you can't love what you want somebody to be. You gotta love them where they're at. Did you hear me? We can't love what we want somebody to be. We have to love them where we're, they're at and that will help them get to where they need to be. And I'm not suggesting that you let people abuse you or you let them take advantage of you. That's not what I'm talking about at all. But I am saying that you, don't, you can't carry this stuff around in your heart. Think about what Jesus said on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Stephen, when he was being stoned, said, forgive them. We read last night how Paul, when everybody deserted him, he said, Lord, forgive them. You know, I think a lot of times when people hurt us, they really don't know what they're doing. They're acting out of their own pain. A lot of times people hurt us and they don't even realize that they've hurt us. And, and I'm not saying at all that my father did not know that what he was doing to me when he was sexually abusing me was wrong. He had to know it was wrong or he wouldn't have gone to such extremes to hide it. But I really don't believe that he understood what it was doing to me. I don't think he, and, and really when he was in his 80s, he told me that. He said, I, I had no idea how bad I was hurting you. Well, he grew up in a household of incest. And so he was acting out of learned behavior and hurting people hurt people. When you learn that, it's, it helps you to be able to get over the things that people do to you. There's so much stress in the world, and people today are just about to explode. And they end up hurting other people, and then we keep letting them hurt us by staying bitter and miserable. Have you been burned by someone or something, and now you're struggling to find healing? Learn to forgive quickly, and avoid the trap of offense with Joyce's three-part teaching series, Burnt But Not Bitter. You know, the first step to healing 
take 100% responsibility for your life right now. And you might say, well, it's not my fault that I'm in this situation. It may not be your fault that you got here, but if you don't take responsibility for it, you'll never get out of it. Don't get stuck in your pain. Move past it and into a new beginning with God's help. This series is available for your gift of any amount. Just visit us at JoyceMeyer.org or call us toll-free at 1-800-727-9673. This is the Joyce Meyer Masterclass. Just you and Joyce exploring life and God's Word together. One-on-one time you can't get anywhere else. In a way like you've never seen. Exclusive content, study tools, and special features. Your own personal experience at your own pace with your own instructor. And that would be me. Grab a pen. Deepen your faith in God and grow in His Word. The Joyce Meyer Masterclass. Sign up now at JoyceMeyerMasterclass.com. You're hardworking, an achiever. The fast pace can stress you out and lead to burnout unless you make the necessary changes now. Joyce Meyer wants to teach you how with her newest book, How to Age Without Getting Old. In these pages, you'll learn how to let God lead you today so you can be even more effective in the future. How to Age Without Getting Old, new from Joyce Meyer. Order your copy today. Today on our Candid Conversation, the one many people have been asking for and waiting on. A lot of people on social media have said if they could sit down with you, they would ask how to make a marriage last 50 years. <laughs> yeah. And you and Dave um, have been married 50 how many now? 54. 54 years. So a lot of questions throughout the process, but is is there a, a key or a few keys that you would throw out as this is really important if you're going to make it for the long run? Well, first of all, I do think that uh, being believers in Jesus mm-hmm. and both of us wanting to please him and be obedient to him has made a huge, huge, huge difference. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Especially in the beginning of our marriage when I had so many personality problems because of being abused in my childhood. And um, I mean, I I honestly really didn't know how many problems I had. I really didn't. I didn't. I look back now and I think, how in the world did he make it through those first few years? So Dave had definitely been prepared by God spiritually for me. He had had a very strong walk with God. And, you know, I don't want anybody that's listening who says, well, yeah, I don't have, you know, my husband's not like that, so, you know, mine will never work. I mean, God can work in different ways in different relationships and situations. But in in my case, um, you know, I tell the story that Dave and I had five dates and he asked me to marry him. And he, he, he had been praying for a wife and he wanted God to give him somebody that needed help. And that we know when you think about that, who prays that? So it really had to be a desire that God put in his heart. Yeah. I mean, nobody prays, you know, I want to get married, but make it somebody that's got a bunch of problems so I can help. I mean, <laughs> not a, not you, a prayer I you prayed. Don't do that. Yeah. So Dave and I both realized that our relationship was supernaturally put together by God for the purpose that we all see. And um, now that doesn't mean that, you know, we didn't have anything to do with deciding to right. throw in the towel and quit or to stick it out. But I do think that if people, when they're going through troubled times in their marriage, if they don't have that, I really want to please God mentality, it's too easy to just say, I'm not putting up with this anymore. I'm out of here. You know, there was only one time that Dave ever said to me, he said, if you continue to treat me the way you do, he said, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do in the future. Yeah. And Dave was not the type to threaten. And so that kind of put the fear of God in me, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And I realized that I really needed to get serious about changing. Yeah. 
And I remember after a year of me being what I thought was on really good behavior, <laughs> I said to him, so how do you feel about me now? And he said, better, but we've still got a long way to go. And I was really disappointed. But I would say the first three years were probably the most difficult. But even in the midst of that, we still had fun. You know, we everything wasn't bad. You know, we had... We went to church on every Sunday. We we did things together. You know, we yeah. it, it, it wasn't that it was all bad, but there were times that were really bad because I had a really bad temper and I would get mad and stay mad at him for days on end. But Dave had a real ability to not let me steal his joy. And so I would say to anybody that's in a, we'll just call it for the sake of anything else, a troubled marriage, I think that you you have to, be strong enough in God to not let the troubled person steal your joy. Yeah, because yeah. If, if you flip the tables a little bit, you're looking at it as a person who married a godly man who was well-grounded and ready right. to do whatever he needed to do. But if you look at it the other way, Dave married a person <laughs> who had been through a lot of pain in her right. life, had been abandoned, divorced, right. and was going to be a challenge. And very strong personality. And our personality mix was also a godsend because Dave is more easygoing and laid back. And I was just like a spitfire, you know. And actually, God caused him to like some of the things about me that most people just wouldn't have put up with at all. Like, he said, I like your sassy personality, because I've told him, you know, I'll really try to change. He's like, I like you, I like you, you know. I mean, he now, if I get disrespectful, he doesn't like that, right. and he'll tell me. But we we argued a lot in the first few years, or maybe I argued with myself. I don't know. He wasn't much of an arguer. But he's told me, you know, since it happened that there were times when he would just go out, drive around and just cry because he just didn't, he didn't know what to do. He yeah. didn't, he didn't know what to do with me. He, and I, I remember him saying, you know, I've tried everything to keep you happy and you're just not going to be happy. So I'm just going to quit trying. And so Dave just basically lived his life. But the thing, he really did love me unconditionally. You know, when I would receive love, he, he never, he never mistreated me or stopped loving me. I, I didn't know how to receive the love mm -hmm. because I'd been hurt and wounded. But ju I, I just think about how many people that are Christians that are in situations like he and I were. Mm -hmm. And because he stuck it out, look at, look at what's happened. And how many people, if they wouldn't just throw the towel in or say we're incompatible or you know, I'm not putting up with this anymore. How many Christians could have an opportunity to really dramatically change somebody's life if they could be consistent in front of them but still have that unconditional love? Mm -hmm. See, if, if he would have gotten mad at me and mistreated me or not talked to me or, you know, been mean to me, I wouldn't have made it through that. But he... He still was always ready to love me if I was ready to receive it. And like I said, it wasn't like it was all bad and we fought all the time. I mean, right. we, we had kids. We did things. We did things with couples at church. You know, I eventually started playing golf with Dave. And, you know, a lot of times we think, man, I married the wrong person or our personalities just don't match at all. But I think more often than not, God's picked out the right person for you. It's just there's things about them that you don't like. Right. And you focus on just that. Yeah, we've talked and, before that your personalities being very different is sometimes feels like a bad thing, but right. is often used as a good yeah. thing that God does for us. Right. Yeah, I mean, Dave's personality was absolutely perfect for me. Yeah. If he would have been a type A like me, we would have probably made it about a month, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think God, he gives you somebody that's different than you are because you kind of fill up each other's weaknesses. Yeah. You know, Dave sometimes needed me to put a little fire under him. He needed to hold me back a little bit. And Let, let's fast forward past those years okay. where, um, you know, you, you went through that really difficult time in the beginning and God began to work on both of you and, right. and shape you and pull you together. And I'm sure sometimes pull you apart. Mm -hmm. um, I, 
I've always kind of seen marriage like like a pyramid, and a lot mm. of people see it this way. You know, as you move closer to God, you move closer to each other. Right. So you get to the point then where you've been married many years. You're both walking with the Lord. Was it always perfect, rosy after that? I no. mean, because no. 50 years, I'm sure it still had to be rough at different patches along the way. Matter of fact, I'll tell you something. But it's not funny, but it'd be good for people to hear this. Dave and I rarely ever argue now. I mean, we might go a whole year and not have an argument. But this year, 2021, we've had three arguments, and two of them have been pretty hefty. Hmm. And I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> and I just think that it's it's time for me to again come up higher in some areas and there's just been some things that have come up with that normally doesn't bother Dave at all that he's just been bothered by it. Sure. Yeah. And uh but I know that it'll work out good. I know that. It's like I already see Good fruit from him. And here again, he never stays mad. I don't stay mad. You know, we're both quick to forgive. But I thought it would be interesting for people to hear that. That right. You know, it's, I mean, it's been years since we've had that many arguments that close together. It's just like. And I know you guys. Yeah. So for you to call them arguments, <laughs> yeah. they probably really are. Yeah, they were. Because, I mean, you know, there are a lot of little things that we all have together. Yeah. But but it's encouraging to people, I think, to hear that, that, okay, it's been over 50 years and you still have things to work through together. Now, Dave would probably say we didn't have an argument, but we did. It, <laughs> it was, it, let's put it like this, it was a, a heated disagreement. <laughs> if we don't want to call sure, it an yeah. argument, it was right. a heated disagreement yeah. where we just felt differently about some things and you know there were some things that he said that I just thought he was totally wrong and you know but you always have to go back to God usually like what I do is I may have my feelings hurt for a couple of days I don't stay mad you know I've I've got more spiritual wisdom than to stay mad because I know that opens the door for a devil and God always gives us both the grace to free and he said even the last time this happened he said I'm not mad at you he said, I just feel like this needs to change. And, um, you know, at first I just didn't get it. I mean, I just didn't see it. And then, but if you if you ask God, is he right? Hmm. Or is she right? You know, a lot right. of times he said to me, you need to see this from my vantage point. And that's what we don't do a lot of times. We only see our we only see the way we feel about it, and we don't walk around to the other person's side and say, how would I feel if this was me? Yeah. And, you know, um, but like I said, that just rarely ever yeah. happens. And I do believe that if we let it, when there is confrontation in a marriage, I do believe that if we let it, it can work out good, and everybody can learn something from it, and we can... Go on and be happy. You know, you, I remember reaching a point, and I think everybody has to do this, where, you know, I didn't like this about Dave, and I didn't like that, and I didn't like something else, and you, you know how we get. And it's like, you know, well, I want him to do this, and I want him to, and uh, I remember him saying one time, you better be glad I'm the way I am, or you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. <laughs> I yeah. thought, you know, how many men could let their wives do what he's let me done do, and been right there beside me the whole time? And a lot yeah, of people don't true. realize the key roles that Dave played in the ministry behind the scenes. He worked very hard. And yeah. so he's had a big, big role in this. And, you know, I just... He was very supportive all the way. But he was very supportive all the way. He always sits and listens to me. He always, you know, laughs at my same stories all the time. And he said they're funny every time. He said, even though I've heard you, you know, so God has definitely anointed him for his role in the ministry. And... uh just like he's annoying me. But I was going through this time. Well, I wish Dave would do this. And um, I think sometimes everybody, if you're going to stay together, you come to what maybe what I call, I don't want to call it a crisis point because we weren't having a crisis, but it's like you, you have to decide at some point 
I'm sticking with this forever. Right. <laughs> yeah. No matter what. Or if they keep doing this, I'm out of here. If they keep doing that, I'm out of here. If they keep doing that, I'm out of here. You you have to be really fully committed. And if you are, then that makes all the difference in the world. A lot of the things that people marry somebody for are still there, but they just find out other things when they start living together in marriage mm-hmm. <laughs> that, well, I didn't know you did that. Do you know, I didn't even know Dave played golf when we got married. That's he, hard to believe. I didn't even know he played golf. Well, I mean. It was a whirlwind romance. Well, we had five dates and yeah. he asked me to marry him. I, I mean, I met him in October. You should next, have said, wait, yeah. do you golf? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I met him in October and the next year, by January the 7th, we were married. Wow. Yeah. So it was very, very quick. And um, I always tease and say he had to marry me fast before he found out what he was really getting. <laughs> and uh, But now he's had 54 years of it. So 54 years. God is and, you know, doing some great things. We have a good time. Yesterday we went out together. We both went a couple places together and had a meal. And Dave is normally not what I would call a funny person. But I told him, I think you took a funny pill yesterday. He was just cracking jokes all day long and making me laugh. And, <laughs> and I was such a good wife yesterday. I asked him every sports question I could possibly think of. <laughs> nice. <laughs> good job. I was just like... <laughs> Go, girl. Because <laughs> you know we, what it takes. We are pretty selfish, all of us sometimes, and to to ask other people what they're interested in and give them a chance to yeah. talk about that, I think is important. And I probably don't do enough of that. If learn a person's love language, and Dave's love language is quality time, and he he does like it if people listen to him. When he's talking to them about something. Yeah. But because so much of what he likes is sports and I'm not interested in them, a lot of times I, you know, I don't want to listen. But, you know, love will set aside mm. its preferences and prefer the other person. Yeah. You cannot marry anybody that's not going to disappoint you once in a while, that's not. You know, like I didn't feel good the other day. I had a little stomach virus. And, you know, Dave's not, he's just not the kind to say, oh, come here, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I called my daughter and she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And she just like felt sorry for me. And, you know, that's just not Dave. Well, I used to get mad about that kind of stuff. And you you have to learn to accept the things about people because honestly, they don't know how to give it to you. Right. If If it's not, in them, they don't even think about it. They don't know how to give it to right. you. Right, yeah. Well, thank you very much <laughs> for the encouragement, for the advice. I know that um, a, a lot of it is very applicable for any kind of relationship, and uh, marriages will be better for it. So, Amen. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.